the middle finger that Maki Ito loves to shoot is more than an edgy signature for the cutest in the world. It's a symbolic statement of the very defiance that fuels her career. In 2013, Maki Ito was a part of the idol group Lin Q and got her start in wrestling for DDT and sporadic appearances. In 2017, she was removed from her group and into a musical theater, but only if they could sell a thousand tickets to the concert, which Maki Ito succeeded in doing by singing on the streets. Regardless of her efforts, she was fired. Shortly after, she would win her first singles match in a lumberjack death match with special ref Takagi. And by death match, they mean adorable hammers. But looking back, it's kismet how everything played out. Maki Ito exists out of spite to prove everyone wrong. She wasn't a good enough singer? Well, fuck you. I will sing my own entrance and dance and do my favorite part. This little arm thing. Too big of a head. Well, it's my main weapon now, bitch. It's so iconic, recognizable, and hilarious. It's very Buster Keaton stuff. Well, we're not cute enough? Well, I'll shout at everyone that I am the cutest in the world. And if I say it enough, it'll come back true and they will say, Ito-chan. Guess what? It did. Maki Ito took failing as an idol and fueled it all into branding herself as her own star. She's easily the most recognized name of TJPW. AEW really made her brand explode with her personality and GCW actually treats her like the star she is. But it's Maki Ito who did it all. Someone who knows how to brand herself without ever needing to watch her in the ring. She's got her simps. She's got her normal fans who appreciate her. And she's got her haters too. Thank you. Maki Ito is Jim Connett's friend. Favorite wrestler? <laughs> I don't think so. Jim Connett hates me. <laughs> Regardless, her name is very popular. Maki Ito is a comedic, entertaining, edgy idol character who yells fuck a lot and cries, but can also have emotionally strong finishes when she needs to. I specifically wanted to comment on her performance against Minoru Suzuki at TJPW's Grand Princess 2024. In my opinion, it's the best performance she's ever given. But when I speak about performance, I'm not talking about the match or the moves or bumps. I'm talking about her theatric performance with the ring being the stage. Oh, oh, oh I didn't put my glasses like this. this type of wine drinking analysis this meerkat likes. Oh, I know it's so navel gazing, but pro wrestlers are the best actors in the world. And this was a theatric comedic tour de force that was all done in one single take in front of a live audience. This is what I love about wrestling. Maki Ito already had a small background in film with various appearances in horror movies. Played herself in this film here, but only appears for one second in the trailer. However, I did find her starring in a short film. She plays a friend of a lonely bullet girl. Just basically smiles the whole time in like slow motion before dying, but performance was always the centerpiece of her whole bit. Back in 2021, Maki Ito teamed with Minoru Suzuki, but before then, Maki Ito took her simp, Chris Brooks, this tall bastard, who would dance with Maki Ito in the ring, and they visited Minoru Suzuki's shop to convince him to join the Maki Ito Respect Army. In order to be his friend, they had to spend 10,000 yen, which Brooks was more than happy to simp for. I mean, Brooks is literally all of us. We did the same damn thing. But Suzuki ended up giving great life advice to Maki Ito on her wrestling career and even on depression. <laughs> Ito is so interesting because in the face of criticisms and playful banter, she laughs it off. That's her personality. Just laugh it off, smile right through it. Minoru Suzuki wasn't her friend though. He just wanted to kick some ass. And Maki just kept getting in the way and pissing him off and doing this to him. <laughs> Minoru Suzuki won the match, but Maki Ito could never get his attention to him. She's just this annoying child. Oh my god. <laughs> Maki Ito wanted to go viral on social media and wrestling Minoru Suzuki would certainly grab attention. Story-wise, I initially found it to be how Suzuki treated Maki like a little girl. Grandpa didn't treat granddaughter seriously based on their past tag efforts and granddaughter was angry and made him fight along the way we got typical maki behavior and everything in my opinion was performed so 
stricken well by Maki Ito. Her faces and expressions were so good, so unique, so Maki. Minoru Suzuki was Minoru Suzuki, a violent sociopath who can murder at any moment, being the straight man in a comedy match. He has the reputation of the murder grandpa. We know you don't fuck with them because then he'll be all like, People die all the time, just like that. Why, you could wake up dead tomorrow. Good comedy needs drama to build into a punchline, and Suzuki is perfect for this. Joe Pesci can play a wise guy in Goodfellas and then get his head set on fire by a kid in Home Alone without changing his range that much. Minoru Suzuki is that. He just has to be Minoru Suzuki, just like Robert De Niro. It's just Robert De Niro now. The grandpa feels no threat from Maki Ito and this offends her, who does everything in his power to fight Minoru without having to fight him, doing her cute antics, being like, I'm super cute, and annoying Suzuki who doesn't find her cute. He screams at her, and Maki does the crying bit that turns the entire audience against him. Oh, he even makes Matsui cry, leading to Maki doing the cutest in the world bit. Anything to distract Suzuki from death. But she grows from being fearful of murder by Grandpa to finding the courage to fight Suzuki with all her strength as the stubborn-ass old man laughs it off in front of her face. So Maki's like, hit me then, Grandpa. You sure? Fuck yes. Oh, oh, okay. Oh. Maki was hit with a solid shot by Suzuki and died for it. But she fought back. She managed to hit Hikokeshi and nearly get the win. And for like three seconds, Suzuki had to turn into a professional killer, expertly handling the situation and murdering Maki with a sleeper. And now, Minoru Suzuki is the cutest in the world. Goddamn cutie. But seriously, this was a terrific performance from Maki Ito. After the match, she had these looks here. But the story had its good, wholesome ending as the grandpa accepted his granddaughter as a fighter. But in much typical Maki sense, she flips him off and immediately pays the consequences. Oh no! <laughs> Look at her glasses! Dragged away to the end of the stage to give their bow to the audience like any good piece of theater before getting both middle fingers bent. Oh, again, a tour, the forced performance from Aki Ito of the match itself was awkwardly paced. You know, some moments took too long and some of the bits went on too long. You know, like, like Matsui's crying was like excessive to the point where I was like laughing, you know? But to me, this was like Rami Malek and Bohemian Rhapsody, a bad movie also with bad pacing, like this infamous terrible editing here. But Rami Malek gave a performance that won him an Oscar. That was Maki Ito in this match. Her performance was the best I've seen her in, telling the story of a girl everyone has doubted her whole life, who gave a middle finger to it all, did it all herself, represented in a story of an elderly master not taking her seriously until she forced him to, and even made him work for three whole seconds. It went back to what Minoru told Maki in 2021. And she took that advice and made herself an even bigger star than before. But this, this was simple, wholesome, funny, dramatic. Motherfucker, I loved it. Fuck.
thank you to all my Patreon sponsors. I'm going to start off with my newest one. We have the great Bogo. Thank you so much, Bogo. Since I'm here, I'm going to go backwards. We have Impossible, 033, Doggo Snake, Dots, Morningstar, Jesse, The Outlaw, Tony Davis, Little Choo Choo Moon, Kavitari, Underscore D, Steven Stevens, Scott Racer, Paul Darn, Paco Simon, T. Wall, Julius, Sunglasses, now in NXT, with Hunter, ah! we have J. Ole, I Want Victims, 45222, our Aaron, Zakarius, Charlie Wave, Juggernaut Graphics, Party Money 520, Ray, Kanashige, Adam K, Kev, Mullen, Dan, Work, Terrence, Nino, Jeffu, Matthew Belajuska, Justin, Stein, Mannix, Ace of Trace, Renee, Valdez, Tej, Diop, Chano, and yeah! Thank you.